three. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome another evening on this platform. Um, this program is called Unlocking the Twisted Bible. Uh, last week, we had um, an interview with our brother, Elder Andrew. And this week, we are going to continue that interview. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Sandra Adomako from uh, Holland. And I am going to invite my brother right now. Brother Andrew, are you there? Shalom, shalom. Yahweh, shalom. Yeah, yeah Enna. <laughs> Uh, so welcome once again, Elda, and thank you for um, giving us your time another uh, yet again uh, to continue um, this controversy about Passover versus Easter. Yes. So we started um, this um, interview concerning Passover and Easter, and you sh you showed us a lot. You showed us a lot through Bible. Mm -hmm. And today we would like to continue because I have a list of questions. Wow. And we could only go, uh, we only went through four of the questions. So today mm -hmm. we won't waste any time. We will just start immediately with the questions. So are you ready, Elda? Yeah, before I will say yes or no, I would like to offer a word of prayer, then we can continue. Yes, please. Of course. Okay. Most high God, our blessing King. We thank you one more time for giving us the time to meet and to educate people around the world. But we thank you that in the time of in times like this, there's nothing that one can have and succeed than the truth. Amen. That's why Messiah, you said that we should search the scriptures. In it, we have salvation, but it is it, the same scripture that testifies of you. But I don't know everything, but the spirit of the living God, please come and help me answer questions to bring honor and glory to your name. May this also have impact on anyone who will listen to this interview. Then lives will be turned, the truth will be heard, and the light will be lightened. This is my Amen. prayer. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Good. Thank you, Elder, for your prayer. You're welcome. So, last week, I asked you about the difference between Passover and Easter, and also the origin of Passover and the origin of Easter. And you explained it all based on the, uh, the Bible. So all the viewers or listeners who followed us last week, they got their answers concerning those questions. So today I would like to continue with the questions. Okay. And um, so the next question, because we learned that um, many Christian church churches um, celebrate Easter rather than Passover. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's nothing in the Bible um, written about Easter. Mm -hmm. While uh, Passover, um, living the, the, the creator has written everything concerning the Passover in the Bible, how mm -hmm. to celebrate it, how, uh, when to celebrate it and all those things. Mm -hmm. So the question would be, why do most Christian churches for, uh, celebrate Easter instead of Passover? Yeah, this is a tricky question. <laughs> Why do they celebrate the Easter instead of the Passover? Well, um, whenever it comes to a decision to make wrong or right, I could say that human beings are tend always to do the wrong thing. Let me take you to Genesis chapter three. The Bible says that mankind fell, or even chapter two. God said to Adam, of all the trees in this garden, you may freely eat, except this particular one. Don't eat it. So the very one that Adam touched. In much the same way, of all the numerous of Bible verses in the Bible from Exodus throughout, as I pointed most of it to you last week, Mm -hmm. They all point to the Passover. Yeah. They celebrate the Passover. And it is written in the Bible, the Passover of the Lord is not the Passover of the Jews. Mm -hmm. 
yet we don't. We are prone to do the only one thing which I explain with the scriptures that as chapter 12, verse number four, that the word Easter over there, which is Pashka, is a wrong translation. Is the mm-hmm. very one, the only one among the whole lot that is what Christians tend to celebrate. Yes. And it is amazing because the last time I checked, more than 70 references of the scriptures point to the Passover. The yeah. only one, only one in Acts, that's what people are prone to go for. But there's a force behind it. There's a power behind it. Mm-hmm. Come to that side. The second reason is that I will blame our pastors, the church leaders, the so-called prophets and so-called educated pastors. Mm-hmm. They are the cause of this. This reason is in twofold. Yeah. I'll give the other side first, materialism. When it comes to things like Christmas or things like Easter celebration, mm-hmm. celebration that are worldly. If I say worldly, I mean drunkards are involved, we smokers are involved, our shower people are involved, all kind of outrageous sinners are involved in the same thing that is meant for deep-hearted Christians. They celebrated this whole thing. The Bible says, what has the darkness got to do with the light? What yes. has Belial got to do with Christ? I mean, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. At this kind of celebration, everyone is involved because it's about so-called Jesus, which is wrong. Yeah. Two, greedy. The men of God in our holy stakings, the men of God who lead the church, the pastors, they ignore of what God says we should do. Let me give you a tiny scripture to mm-hmm. back up what I'm saying. Yeah. Let me take you to an online Bible. I hope it's ready for me to use it. And then uh, you read it yourself that it is a rather shocking that most of this is, as I'm saying, is because of the pastor's fault. They don't teach God's people God's word. That's yeah. why all these things are happening. If mm-hmm. you want to teach people God's word, People will even make the mistake, but they will get the notion that, hey, yeah. that's what Yahweh says we should do. Yes. But the pastors themselves, they are rather making the mistake so that people will sin against God, so that they will get their gifts. Mm-hmm. When it comes to uh, 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 Christmas, they will get gifts from the church members. Have you thought of it that if the pastors are the ones who are supposed to give gifts to the church members, would they not yeah. stop this nonsense? <laughs> they will. But because they are the one getting it from the members, that's why they don't talk about it. Okay, let me say the online Bible is ready now. So let's go to the Bible to Ezekiel chapter 22, verse number 26. Let's read the word of God. Ezekiel 22, mm-hmm. verse 26. Let me zoom it up. The, your followers or your listeners will also read with us. 26. The Bible says, Her priests have violated my laws and profane. Let me highlight it so that people will know where we are reading from. See, make it yellow. Her priests, that is our priests, our pastors, our Mm -hmm. churches, they have violated God's law and prayed his holy things. Their holy things include the holy festivals, the Mm -hmm. holy days. You see, I would say that our pastors are motivating the congregation to turn over from holy days to holiday. You know the yeah. difference now? Holy yeah. days and holiday. holiday. <laughs> holy days in Las That's a holiday. You're going to have fun. Yeah. And the holy day is prescribed for the Lord. Yes. Because we are not prone to holidays than to the holy day. That's what the Bible is talking about here. Right. You see, our priests have violated God's law. They have mm-hmm. failed profane God's holy things. Example. The uh, Passover, they have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy. Yeah. Nor have they made known the difference between unclean and clean. Yeah. And they have hidden their eyes from God's Sabbath, so that I am profane among them. Even the Sabbath, which is the holy day of God, they say no. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that is why people are now prone to do what God does not want. The priest and the pastor, they are not teaching the congregation the right thing. Mm-hmm. That's the reason. Because in my church, where I am now, I thank God for where I am now, to be honest. Mm-hmm. My priest has explained to me 
what is right and what is wrong. Let me yeah. back up my claim with another scripture in Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Let me quickly take you there. Then you can make a decision now or a conclusion now for you to know why people are now prone to do what God does not like. Malachi yeah. chapter 2. It's on your screen and I'm sharing it with you. It's not anything secret. It's in the Bible. Because the problem is that we read the congregants, we are we, we, we are so lazy, we don't, we don't, we don't read, we don't read the scriptures. Yes. Verse seven. Let me read it to your hearers. He says that the lips of the priest should keep knowledge. The pastors, their lips should keep knowledge. And people should seek the law from his mouth. If anybody mm -hmm. wants to know what God is God's law, what we should celebrate, they should go to the pastors and get the correct answers from God's yes. law from them. Yes. Why? The reason is simply because he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Yes. They call themselves men of God. They call themselves pastors. They call yeah. them, they, themselves whoever title, reverend, doctor, bishop, whatever. They, yeah. If you call yourself such a person, then you should know that you are God's messenger. So if somebody needs knowledge, he should come to you. Mm -hmm. So if you were a pastor and at this age, you don't know the difference between a Passover and Easter, then shame unto you. You are not fit to be God's messenger. Shame mm -hmm. unto you. Because the Easter that they are celebrating now, nobody knows its background. Yeah. But last week, I proved to you that right from Exodus chapter 12, God is yeah. still it. Yeah. Through the, the entire book and as to now, it's been done. So like I was saying, my pastor teaches me that because from his mouth come the knowledge that Easter is something for the worldly. It's, it's, it's something that is, uh, is for their goddess. Yes. And the law of God, he proved it to me from the law of God. It's written in scriptures. So now that I have come to believe and I've come to know, oh, as for me and my household, we shall celebrate Passover, not Easter. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Elder. Mm. This actually also answered answers the next question. Oh, thank God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where in scripture can we read about Passover? I think that last week you, you showed us the scripture. Yeah. Yes. And we did not get it even into the New Testament. So. Yes. So maybe we can continue with the new Passover in the New Testament. All right. Because last week you showed with the with scripture, you showed us about the Passover, how it used to be. How it came to pass, and and then um, maybe today you can show us in the New Testament what okay. is the new Passover. What how did it change in the New Testament, or did it even change? Okay, let, let me answer you. Then we take the scriptures. Then we um, we sub, we uh, <laughs> we support with it. Yes, the new Passover as Christ is instituted. He did not make any new Passover and change his name to Easter. No. No, comma, no. Why? When Christ was alive, he was here. He himself celebrated it. Okay. I'll prove to you in the scriptures. He was part of it. And because he was a lamb of the Passover that God had prepared, after he had made the last Passover with them, Mm -hmm. Told them that <laughs> it's time for me to die. Yeah. He had already told the disciples many things because John chapter 1, verse 29, John said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the earth or of the world. So John clearly identified Jesus Christ to be, mm, to be the Lamb for the past. Yeah. So yeah. after Christ was crucified on the cross, since then, no more animals were used. Yeah. He was the last. Sacrificial lamp. You understand? So that's yes. a new thing. Secondly, blood of that animal was used in those days. But now, the blood of Christ, that speaks better thing than the one of Abel. That is what God needs. Mm -hmm. That is the supernatural. So when he was instituting the Passover in Matthew chapter 26 and 28 down there, everything he said it. Everything right there in the scripture. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Because you will not kill the lamb and drink his blood. The blood mm -hmm. will be sprinkled of the people. But now yeah. I said, you are going to take it internally. That's the difference now. Internally. 
those days, uh, Moses and the disciples, uh, sorry, Moses was sprinkling the blood on the people. But yeah. now, no blood sprinkling, we are taking it in internally. So instead of, we don't drink blood as a matter of fact, so because of that, he used the vine to replace the blood. Yeah. Because in the Old Testament, I think uh, Genesis chapter 49, when Jacob, sorry, yeah, Israel was blessing his children, he said, you Judah, uh, is there, you read it, you see it. So that is the only thing new about the new Passover, but the name didn't change. Yes. Christ himself never celebrated what you call the uh, 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 Easter. Christ didn't do that. None no. of the disciples celebrated Easter. No. no. So if we talk about new Passover, it's new, yes, because the blood is substituted with the vine, the bread is substituted with the body of Christ, and the mm -hmm. covenant has been changed to new. That doesn't make the uh, the Passover's name change to, um, what do you call it, uh, um, uh, uh, Easter. No, it's still Passover. Okay. Yeah. And you are also asking about um, the, uh, what do you call it, um, the uh, quotations in the New Testament that helps. Let's quickly yeah. go to Matthew. Let me share the screen with you. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Reading from verse number two downwards. Let's see. The Bible says that it came to pass. Let me read from verse one for context sake. Yes. It came to pass when Jesus had finished all these things, all these saying, that he said to his disciples, you know that two days from now is a Passover and the son of man will be delivered to be crucified. What was he talking about? He was talking about his death. Mm -hmm. His execution as a new Passover lamb. Yeah. So Christ knew there was a Passover. Yeah. It is not written in your Bible that uh, two days from now is the Easter or no. communion. No, it's Passover. Yeah. And the word Passover there in your Bible is Pascha. Yeah. When you scroll down to verse number 17, if I'm not mistaken, verse 17, it's also written there. Now, on the yeah. first day of the feast of the living bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, where do you want us to prepare to eat the Passover? It's right there, right there in the Bible. So if that time the Passover was a wrong word for the uh, disciples to use, just guys would have warned and say, my friend, from now onwards, no more um, Passover, but call it Easter, or I'm going to yeah. give you to another name. Jesus Christ did not say anything concerning that. And yeah. he answered them. He answered them. When they jumped to verse 18, uh, he said to them, go into the city and say to him, uh, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with yeah. my disciples. So verse 17, the disciples are asking him about Passover. Verse 18, this guy's giving them an answer concerning the Passover. Yeah. He didn't correct them and said, no, because I'm going to institute it new, you're going yeah. to call it communion or Easter. No. Verse 19 to conclude it. So the mm -hmm. disciples did as he had directed them and yeah. they prepared their Passover. So Passover is something that we prepare. Yes. That's what the account of Martin. If that one is not enough, let's go to the next book in the New Testament, which is uh, Mark. The book of Mark. Chapter, let's begin from chapter 14. Mark 14. See, Mark 14, it's right there. The plot to kill Jesus, that's the topic. And the Bible says, after two days, it was Passover. After two days, it was Passover and the feast of the living bread. And the chief priest and the scribes sought how he might take him by trickery to put him to death. Mm. But they said, not during the feast, yeah. unless there will be an uproar from the people. You see that? So yeah. that was the same, around the same time that Peter was also arrested that they want to kill him. Yeah. 
Because the Passover, everybody from everywhere, they come together and they celebrate it, just as right now what is going on in Ghana. Yeah. People from Belgium, Holland, America, Germany, all over the world. In Ghana itself, a greater Accra, Kumasi, Bunahafu, they all come to Kumasi to celebrate it. Mm -hmm. More than 10,000 people were there under the canopy. Yeah. Excluding those who were standing outside there. Thousands mm -hmm. of them. So it was the same era. They came to celebrate it, the Passover, not Easter. Yeah. And when they jump to verse number um, 12 of Mark, he said that, verse 12 says, um, now on the face of the living bread, when they killed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? You see that? Mm -hmm. Right there. That time Christ was alive. Yes. He ate the Passover lamb with them. Yeah. But the following year, there was no lamb to be killed <laughs> because he himself is a Passover lamb. Yeah. Let's see what Jesus said in verse 14. Mm -hmm. Or let me continue from 30. He said, and he sent out two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city. A man will meet you carrying a pitch of water. Follow him. Wherever he goes in, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is the groom guest? Where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? So Christ celebrated the Passover, not Easter. Mm -hmm. and communion. Yeah. If that is not enough, let's read further to verse 16. The Bible says, then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. Verse 16. So his disciples went out and came into the city and found it just as he has said to them and they prepared the Passover. Passover. Not the communion or not the Easter. Mm -hmm. Because they are saying that the Passover is the new uh, Easter. That's what mm -hmm. they're saying. But Christ himself did not celebrate anything called Easter or something like that with them. Yeah. That was Mark. Let's jump over to Luke. If that may suffice you. Luke, we start from verse 2. Luke 2 is written right there. Let me zoom it more that your readers can also read along with us. Luke chapter 2, verse number 41, all the way down there. The boy Jesus and Mrs. Collins, that's the top. Let me read from verse 41. He mm -hmm. says, His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of Passover. When is what he was a little boy? Yes. When they were the parents. Yeah. So it is something that it was um, a yearly celebration that the whole Jews celebrated. Yes. And not Easter. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Luke 22. Luke chapter 22. I just add another two and I click enter. You go to Luke 22, verse mm -hmm. number one. It's written there at the top, the plot to kill Jesus. Now the feast of a living bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the chief and the priest and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Too many people were there, and they want to arrange this and kill him in this crowded area. He was afraid. And the Passover, because he was the Passover lamb. Jump to verse 7 with me. Verse 7. Then he says, then the day of uh, uh, living bread, when the Passover must be killed, he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare Passover that we may eat. He did not say, go and prepare communion. Yeah. He didn't say, go and prepare Easter. No, go and prepare Passover. So the Passover is something central that God needs to be celebrated yearly. Yes. Thousand three hundred years before Christ himself came, they were doing it. Mm -hmm. And when he came, he did it. Yes. The good book says that Christ has left us an example that we should follow his footsteps. Yes. Yeah? So if we call ourselves Christians, we are Christ-like people, following their Christ-like actions, following their Christ, what he did, why are we not doing the same thing the master did? But now the Dutch people might say, 
otherwise. Was I so I wise? What do I really do? What my crack will? The person you get, you get one, you pay one. Yeah. And I'm a what? Yes. Verse eight says, "Okay, uh huh. I've read it." And he sent Peter and John, "Go and prepare their place for us, so that we may eat. Eat what? The Passover. Yes. Not the Easter. Let me scroll down to verse eleven. Then they." Uh -huh. Let me highlight it, verse 11 to this one, 12. Then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where, uh, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Not the communion. So yes. the same story we read in Mark, Luke is repeating it. Yes. If it's not true, we look repeat the same story. No. Of course not. Okay. And verse 13, let me scroll a bit more. So they went and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared their Passover, not communion, not Easter. That's why in my earlier, uh, uh, excuse me, in answering your previous question, I say that I give the blame to our pastors and our teachers. Yes. Because they can't teach the difference between this and that. And as you can see in the Bible, everybody has a Bible in the house. Read yes. it yourself. Yes. If you don't read and we want the pastors to read them and come and stand before the pulpit and 45 minutes long, blah, 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 you can't even ask a question. And if you ask a question now, you become too no, and the people begin to hate you. But one thing that we should be careful about this, this is about life and death. Yes. It's about heaven and hell. Yes. So why would I have to sit down for somebody to jeopardize my life with me? No, 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 no. I wouldn't be that so lazy. I would dig into the scriptures. Why? John 5.39 says, you send your scriptures. And if you think you have eternal life, they are the that testifies about me. Christ says so. So why don't we go ourselves to the scriptures and find things out for ourselves? But rather, we leave it to these pastors who, according to Ezekiel 22, verse 26, says they can't even teach the different between what's good and not good. Hmm. If you are not happy, let's go to John. John chapter 2, verse 13. You go to John. The disciple that Christ loved most. John. John 2, verse 13. So we have got from Matthew, Mark, Luke. We are now in John. Uh, yes. Um, verse 13. It's right here. Jesus cleanses the temple. Now the Passover of the Jews were at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. What did he go to do there? It was there that he beat the people at the temple. It was by the Passover. It was not at the Easter celebration. No. The same Pesach or Pascha. That same word is translated here, Passover. Mm -hmm. When we jump to verse number 23, he says that, now when he was in Jerusalem as the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs he did, yeah. not during the Easter. No. And communion is like, when you go to the Sunday church, when they, how they perform the communion, it's like, Everybody is that sad. Yeah. Yeah. Who told you that? Yeah. No, the pastor by a feast. It's a party time. Yes. Christ has done something for us. So Paul yes. said, let us celebrate a feast. Mm -hmm. I beg your pardon. It's right there. Yeah. I'm not happy. Let's go to John 6. John 6 is even clearer. You can read more. Did you bring basket to load the quotations? <laughs> Good. John says, verse 4. It's right here. Let me zoom it. Now, the Passover. Let me do it here. The Passover uh -huh, of the Jews was, uh, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread? <laughs> you see, 
it was around that time that Jesus Christ fed the Go 5,000 people. Oh, yes. See? So everything set in the Passover, people come in from all walks of life to celebrate it. You see, it is right there. Enjoy 11. If you like, let's go to John 11. I hope I'm not rushing you. No, no, no. Not at all. John 11, verse 55, all the way down. Somebody even say, hey, John have verse 55. Say, yeah, it's down, down there. It's right here. Written there. And the Passover of the Jews was near. And many went out from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. So in our church, if mm -hmm. you are baptized, you can partake in the Passover. You might purify yourself by means of immersion, mm -hmm. uh, what you call baptism by immersion. Yeah. Not baptism in the swimming pool in the churches. No, you go to the riverside and do that. Yeah. If you're not happy, jump with me to um, John 12, the next chapter. John 12. I hope you are taking note of all this. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, last time we did a lot of the Old Testament reference, and today it's New Testament. Yes. Yeah, so that those who say that the Old Testament is abolished, ignorant mm -hmm. people, they can see that it's right here in this sister. Yeah. Yes. 12, verse 1 says, Then, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. You see, mm -hmm. then they made him a supper and Martha saved. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. So if you want, people want to date uh, a certain particular um, uh, uh, witness and event, they always start from the council of the Passover because yeah. it was a huge celebration. Yeah. Hey. So if I say, I will come to you, I say, start, mm, give me 10 days after the Passover, I'll come to you. Then you know when you started from. Yeah. That's yeah. why they used to count their days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you like, let's go to the next chapter. Uh, chapter 13, verse 1 is right there. Yeah. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, <laughs> which hour was that? The hour that he was going to substitute the Passover lamb with mm. himself. Yeah. Uh -huh. So John was right when he said, this is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the earth. He knew it. Mm -hmm. So the verse one says that, now therefore, the feast of the Passover, when he says knew that his hour had come, that he would depart from the world to his father, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. When he was about to die, to substitute the, mm -hmm. the, the goats and the bulls and, 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 and the goats, because yeah. he, he knew himself. I think Psalm 40 or thereabout, he said, a body that you have prepared for me, I'm coming for that body to die in it. Yeah. 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 If you're not satisfied, let's go to John 18. <laughs> and I'm not quoting from anywhere, it's from the Bible. It's right there on the screen. New King James. I did not print the Bible or made it myself. It's right there. John 18, verse 28. Verse 28. Right here. Now, Simon Peter stood and warmed himself before they said to him, You are not of his disciples. Uh, verse 28. Oh, sorry. I went too far. Verse 28. Then they led Jesus up from Cephas to the Patriotorium. And this was early morning. But they themselves did not go into the Patriotorium, lest they should be defiled. But they might eat the Passover. Mm. But they might eat the Passover. That's Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? This one is telling you about the trial of Jesus. Yes. Happened during the Passover time. Because okay. that is a part of a lamb. Not so what I understand from here is they led him into the praetorium, but they themselves um, waited outside because yes. they didn't want to defile themselves. 
so mm -hmm. that they might the Passover. Exactly. So when okay. the Passover comes, you have to make yourself purified. Clean. Yes. Okay. You don't contaminate yourself with other things. Yes. And so okay. they, have, they had a reason and a purpose for that. Yeah. That Passover yeah. is not something you can take lightly. Mm -hmm. You can't take it lightly. Yeah. Because it's, they take it very it's very special to God. Yes. The Old Testament era, if something happens and you can't get into the feast on the 14th or the 15th of that month, the 14th to be precise, to be precise God said the following month, that 14th, do it. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. something that we have to take it serious. Really yeah. Serious. Yeah. So when you jump over to verse number 39, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 1839, yes, I read it. 39. It's right there, here. Verse 39 says, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Mm -hmm. You yeah. want me to release you, king of the Jews? And they mm -hmm. said, no, 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 we want Barabbas. That's him. Yeah. The, <laughs> the killer. Yeah. The Passover yeah. that that man called Baraba, he was freed and Christ mm -hmm. was taken. Yeah. Why? So that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Yes. Yes. It happened on the Easter. Yeah. It didn't happen during a communion or a church service. It happened yeah. on the Passover. So when you meet your Christian friends, ask them, are you guys celebrating Passover, Easter, mm -hmm. or communion? And if mm -hmm. Passover is the same as Easter, then what, is, what are you doing with communion? Ask them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Elder, if I, um, how we are going through these scriptures, what I understand out of this is um, the, the called out ones, the chosen people of, of Elohim, who understand the Passover and, uh, and, and and how important it is. They are actually feasting, they are celebrating the fact that Passover is there for them. Meanwhile, the, 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 the other people, those, the, the Easter celebrators, they are mourning. Actually, they are mourning the death of Christ. Yeah. Actually, we should, we should celebrate his death because it's, it's prophecy fulfilling uh, for us. If it didn't take place, then we 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 wouldn't, we wouldn't be here. None of us would be here right now. Exactly. That's why First Corinthians five seven says, "Let us fear the feast." Yes. It is for us something to be jubilating, mm -hmm. but to them it's a morning period because they don't understand it. Yeah. Going back way back to Egypt, uh, yeah. Exodus twelve, when God said, "Kill the lamb," yeah, apply His blood on your doorpost, so that mm -hmm. when I see. Yeah, right there as a sign, I will pass over them. Yes, mm -hmm. and none of their sons die. Imagine mm -hmm. the Yes, because yes. God saved them. Yes, and we are going to use that one as a remembrance for Christ. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We are celebrating. Yes, so we should because be. We should be happy, of course. We shouldn't be mourning. Yeah, we we'll mourn for somebody who is dead. But the yes. question is, is Christ dead? Not dead. Is God not dead? It was what I remember from Easter is that I was always sad because they used to show the, the, the movies about Christ, his life, and it ended up with his death. And I was always very sad, mm -hmm. which is actually a bad feeling because I should I should have been happy and yeah. celebrating instead yeah. of mourning. <laughs> we should be happy, and we 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 we're supposed to be happy. If, I mean. If, if you are ignorant about one thing or the other, that is why all these things came about. Yes. Uh -huh. That's how it is. Mm. But uh, the Bible says we should not be, the, be ignorant about the devices of the enemy. He is yes. using the enjoyment of all these things to steal our minds. And before you realize, it might be too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it is. Okay, then, Elder, I have this important question. I think many... Um, this is something that many Christians um, use mm -hmm. to, how do you say that? They often use it to, to make their wrongs right. Or mm -hmm. to, 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 yes, like even with Christmas celebration. I heard, I hear many, whenever I speak to them, telling them that, um, Christmas is has nothing to do with Christ. Nothing. Nothing. But they will tell me, uh, but deep in my heart, I know 
it is for Christ that I'm doing it. So even if it is not, it has nothing to do with Christ, even if it is not his real birthday, I know deep in my heart, I am doing it for Christ and God will not judge me for that. Mm-hmm. So the same with Easter. Mm-hmm. If we celebrate Easter or Christians who celebrate Easter, they, are, they, they know deep in their heart that they are doing it for Christ. They are celebrating Christ, his death and resurrection. And and although God has told them, hasn't asked them to do that and has commanded them to do the other, if they do it still in the name of, in, in the name of Jesus Christ, will God still be angry with them? Will he still <laughs> punish them? Although they are in, deep in their heart, they are doing it for Christ. Well, uh... <laughs> You know, <laughs> God is a king. Yes. And what about the word of God is there is power. What about the word of God is there is, or the word of a king is there is power. Okay. Now, if God says, do this, you do it. Okay. The whole loss of God is in two. Mm-hmm. Do's and don'ts. Don't. If God says, do this and you don't, it's a sin. Yeah. If he says, don't do this, mm-hmm. and you do it, it's a sin. Okay. Now, when you come to 1 Corinthians 11, 24, Paul mm-hmm. said, from what I received, I also pass on to you. Mm-hmm. And he narrated all the story there. And he says, and he says, do this in remembrance of me. When mm-hmm. you go to Luke twenty two nineteen, he said, do this in remembrance of me. When you go to Matthew 26 down there, he says, do this in remembrance of me. My what? My death. Do this to remember that I died for you. Mm-hmm. He said, no, no, we don't do that one. You're going to use your resurrection instead yeah. to remember yeah. you. Yeah. Is yeah. that what I told you? No, but this is what we want to do. So you can conclude this question for yourself. Will God yeah. be happy with that? No. If you are leaving home, you give conflicts to your children. Eat mm-hmm. the conflicts at 9.30 in the morning. And then 12 o'clock, you, do, you eat the fruit. They wait at 11.30 and eat the fruit with other food that you did not ask them to eat. Will you be happy? No. <laughs> exactly how it is. That's yeah. it. You'll not be happy with them. That's how it is. God is lovely God. Mm-hmm. He's lenient God. But when he says, I don't want this, don't do that. Let me give you one tiny example. Mm-hmm. When they were coming from Egypt, the people were troubling um, this man, Moses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Moses was very close with God. If you have point in time, point in time, he wanted to, God wanted to kill all of them. Yes. It was Moses who intervened yeah. for them. And God stopped, but he killed them anyway. <laughs> the same Moses, God said, when you get to the rock, stretch for the rod to the rock, water will come. What did Moses do? He hit the rock instead. God killed him. Mm. Yeah. When they were coming, Moses had gone to the mountain. Mm-hmm. 40 days he didn't come. The yeah. same people troubled Aaron. Yeah. Make us a God that the God will take us to the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He removed their earrings and made an, an idol for them. Huh. God killed him. <laughs> <laughs> How many trees did yeah. God tell Adam don't touch in the Garden of Eden? One. One. Yeah. He touched it anyway. Yeah. We are all living dead. Yeah. She said, we don't joke with God. Yes. He said, do this, you do it. Mm-hmm. Three mm-hmm. scriptures, uh, Mark, where I, I look, where I just told you, Luke chapter um, 22, mm-hmm. verse 18, 19 downwards. Jesus said, do this, take this man blood, drink it. Because I am dead, I am dead in our hell is taking this man blood, drink it. This is my body broken out for you. Eat, eat. It's my yeah. body. Hey, let me tell you. Whenever you do this, do the remembrance of me. 
I'm not going to eat with you again until in my father's kingdom. Yeah. Every year do it. He said, no, 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 Christ. You can die and go now. When you resurrect, you're going to use your resurrection instead. I mean, <laughs> is God, do, are, you, are we wiser than God? Oh. No. Oh. Now, all what I'm telling you concerning Matthew, Mark, Luke, Paul was not there. Paul met Christ on his way to Damascus to persecute the, the church those days. Yes. Let's read what Paul also had from Jesus. Let's read. Mm -hmm. It is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Yeah. Let me share my screen again with you. Uh, here, the Bible. Here, 1 Corinthians 1. Corinthians chapter number five, verse seven downwards, I think. Okay. Here. Let me read from verse six. Mm -hmm. Your glory is not good. Do not, do you know that a little living leavens the whole lamp? Therefore, purge out the own living, that you may be new lump, since you truly are unliving. For Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hey, hey, this is not like mm -hmm. a feast, a feast of fear. Who yeah. puts your feet like he's going to a morning uh, 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 at a funeral? No. We are feeling yeah. because our Passover lamb has been crucified. Yes. Yes. So it's right there in the scriptures. Hmm. And to crown the eyes, whenever you make eyes, you are a cake designer. So you put mm -hmm. it on the top of the cake. Let me top it up with the last um, New Testament scripture. Then mm -hmm. if you have one more question, you can bring it because of time. Let's go to yeah. Hebrews. Hebrew is the one that fulfilled the script. I like the book of Hebrews. In fact, every time a New Testament is summarized in the Hebrews yeah. uh, 11. Scrolling down to verse number 28. He said, by faith, uh, 28. Let me read the 27. Mm -hmm. 11, 28. 11, 28. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured us seeing him who is invisible. He's talking about Moses. Mm -hmm. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Moses himself mm -hmm. did it. Moses. Yes. Christ did it. Mm -hmm. Peter, Paul, Mark, they all did it. It drew so I was there be Easter. Yeah. Who are we? Wait. So I don't know what more to tell you, sister. Yeah. And I, I say it again. I left the Sunday church because of all these things. Yes. The truth is not being told. They are not telling us the truth. Yeah. The reason they are telling us is bring your money, sow a seed. Yeah. Offering here, offering there, God will bless you. Selling blessing to us as those who are selling oil to their church we're messing them. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah. The truth is right there, but nobody is telling us. And I think uh, the other thing about this whole thing is that people are unaware of um, the dark side of all these celebrations because it is paganism. It is, there is Bosun Sem attached to it. Yeah. And Although they think in their heart they are celebrating Christ, uh, uh, they are not. They are actually worshiping uh, in bosom. Yeah. Of know. Idols and, and everything, everything that is the, all the curses and, and, and punishment that comes from it will come yeah. upon them. They do not know about that no. because they think they are celebrating Christ. Uh -huh. And that is so, so bad of, of the, 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 the Yes, the priests and the, the pastors that they are not teaching their members these things. Yeah. It's exactly. very dangerous. Yeah. And very dangerous. That's why, personally, I don't involve myself in those things anymore. 
yeah. and create. And even if you get out of it, you really have to go on your knees and repent that you ever, ever partook in those celebrations and yeah. ask God for forgiveness and cleansing because there's so many dark things attached to it and yeah. we, we don't know it unless God himself calls you out of it. Yeah. You, net, you will never get out of it. It's now, like a- you, you can get, but the thing is, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Yes. How would you know it if you don't investigate or you don't ask questions or you don't learn? We don't learn. Christians don't learn. Yeah. And what saddens me is church elders, they don't learn. If you yes. ask church elders to open the book of Nahum, you take five years, you wouldn't be read there, you'll be <laughs> flipping the Bible here and there. We don't read. Yeah. I will spend hours in reading and, and uh, making research and writing notes. Yeah. But then yeah. when I ask my superior's question, this is a challenge, mm -hmm. a challenge. I want to yes. learn. Yes. Yes. That's yes. what white people do. So sister, yeah. I think uh, I've answered your questions for today. Yes, you have. Thank okay, you very much. Thank you for me for next time. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for enlightening us on this subject. We, no, have, we have learned a lot. No, thank you for uh, um, giving yourself, sacrificing yourself as a vessel to be used by Elohim and, and teaching us his, his truth. I hope this truth shall set many people free, who, those who hear it, who, who dig into their Bibles, read it for themselves and, and get to know the truth. I hope it will set them free thank you thank you very much so i hope next week we can invite you again and continue sure. okay that's great so, you no problem anytime you cannot come and go <laughs> okay that's great you're welcome shalom shalom to you and to all the viewers and listeners hopefully next 